All right, we got one of my favorites, King Crimson Lizard, okay? Uh, this is the album review, 1970. Five songs, 43 minutes, December 11th, 1970, was released, produced by Robert Fripp or Bob Fripp uh, and Pete Sinfield. They both produced it. Robert Fripp is on uh, guitar, of course. He's taken over Mellotron um, since Ian McDonald quit the band. And he does some keyboards also and other devices. Mel Collins is flute and sax. And he's probably my all-time favorite, maybe. I don't know. Gordon Haskell, bass, guitar, and vocals. Andy McCulloch is the new drummer after Giles, Michael Giles quit. Um, yeah. And Pete Sinfield, he's words and pictures, but he's also a co-producer. I was going to read this paragraph to you, uh, but if you want, you can, I'll just direct you to go to the King Crimson web website or the Schizoid Shop, wherever I got it. But there's a paragraph on um, on what uh, what this album meant to Bob Fripp and the band. And he talks about the distillation of rock, jazz, and quasi-classical music settings. It really is a, uh, it just sounds like a jazz like a prog rock jazz fusion record. I mean, it's um, it it has that essence to it. <clears throat> and he also talks about the performance of John Anderson and um, uh, and Lizard, how it's a lot of you know it's a clash of styles and freeform improv. I mean, go ahead and uh, check it out. The album cover. Let's let's take a look at that real quick. Was done by a graphic artist named Jeannie Barris. Okay, this is the front and this is the back. And what you'll see on um, she was given the lyrics by Pete, uh, uh, Pete Sinfield, and she just created this cover. And on the front it says Crimson, and uh, on the back it says King. Okay, and what she filled in in between the letters are uh, different images of what she conjured up when she read the lyrics about about each song. So um, the front cover has images from the song Circus, Indoor Games, Happy Family, and Lady of the Dancing Water. And the back cover has images from the song Lizard, including Rupert and the bear flying a yellow airplane and Prince Rupert. And, um, you know, there's cows and stuff. There's a, uh, where is that bear? Oh, the, yeah, the bear's right here. <laughs> there's the bear. I think there's a bear on the front too, actually. But it's just, um, she just added stuff from each of the songs, okay? And the inside, by the way, this is the 30th anniversary edition that I picked up at the exclusive company before it closed, a year before it closed. So right there it says, you see how it says 30th anniversary edition. Um, and it's just got a pink, a very plain pink label on it. And, you know, I never even noticed this before, but here's a picture of the band. Let's see, how do we do There we go. Those are the guys. And... Um, yeah, it's just good packaging. The inside, it's got like newspaper clippings or um, or from Melly, Melody Maker or whatever whatever the magazines were back in the day. X Crimson's complete LP. Three new boys join the King's Men. Um, new new King Crimson lineup with two Mellotrons and a VC uh, S3. That's a kind of synth. And they've changed. You know, Pink Floyd used it a lot in the seventies. Haskell quits uh, Crimson. Okay. Uh, so just different newspaper clip things and then there's one page here where it has the lyrics and I don't know I cannot read that maybe with glasses and a magnifying glass <laughs> but that I just want to give you the general feel of what the album cover looks like and uh, you know you can go google it and look at pictures and look at your own copy but also I was gonna uh, I'm gonna post a, a link to a classic rock um, ultimateclassicrock.com has a story on King Crimson Lizard and talks about how Robert Fripp didn't like it and um, when they remastered it he didn't like it and um, he thinks it's unlistenable and then when whenever he got together with Stephen Wilson and did the 5.1 mix that was the first time he actually thought it was uh, okay to listen to so um, you can read all about that I'll, post, I'll try to remember to post the link okay what else for this I'm not going to do super heavy musical analysis because it was difficult. I could not find sheet music. But what I did instead, I, I, I used something called get, getsongkey.com for the musical analysis. And because this is so heavy on jazz and time signature changes and just uh, herky-jerkiness, I didn't even bother to count out the measures. I mean, 
I mean, why? Most of the stuff anyway is probably eight bar or 16 bar standards. And then you got longer, um, uh, you know, you got longer jams in it, especially in the instrumentals. But what, what's the point on an album like this? Just sit back and enjoy this. <laughs> this is jazz. I feel like Jerry Maguire now. The, um, this is jazz. Okay. All right. Anyway, let's get into it. The first track on Lizard is called Circus, uh, including Entry of the Chameleon, 6 minutes and 28 seconds. Uh, lyrics by Pete Sinfield, and I believe the music is by Fripp. I think Fripp wrote all the music to this album. Um, Peter Sinfield said the following. Circus is not about circuses. It's about birth, mind, the planets, the universes. The, the warp requires a weft to become cloth. My birth and death are part of infamy that I know, but I still have a lot of questions. I was then an innocent primitive, but the mud of the jungle was washed off, and I followed a ridiculous, unrideable horse called education, and the answers were all black and white. I was processed, and it was all very important. I found that reactionary old ladies paid the makers and upholders of laws, and that tumblers, clowns, and freaks were tamed. Lest the system be changed and the mirror of illusion stop turning and so on and so forth. So there you go. Um, he's using the song Circus and he's baking the uh, metaphors of life and birth and death into what a circus is. It's in the key of E minor. Gordon Haskell's vocals have this weird... This is my analysis, by the way, now. Um, not Pete Sinfield. They have a weird uh, eff vocal effect, like an echo on it. And actually, this whole you could probably say that about this whole album. There's just a weird vocal effect, and the vocals are almost always underneath the music or in the middle of it, not on top of it. Like he's buried in the music itself. All the instruments of this song are melodic, and they seem to be key, competing with each other, just like a lot of King Crimson albums or Yes albums, really, or even Rush for that matter. They're just um, this is a very busy song, Circus. The main riff is the, uh, it's the, da -na 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 -na, okay, and sometimes the horn plays a, bum 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 da da, bum bum bum, I th it's I think I got that right. Bum 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 ba da da bum 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 ba. Okay, and then verse one is just the piano and Gordon singing on circus. So it's just the piano and Gordon. Night, her sable dome scattered, and with diamonds fused, my dust from a light year. Then the big guitar line, the da na na na. Okay, and so this is how this is kind of how that song goes. It's verse, and then that. Then the second verse is sung underneath Fripp's guitar, and it's it's like real, you know. And he's singing, "Clean my feet of mud, followed the empty zebra ride to the circus." To the circus. He kind of does that at the end. And then the big guitar line, the da na 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 na. And then the third verse, this is this verse is sung underneath a loud keyboard guitar and the drums and the bass. So about half the band, because you don't have the all the woodwinds and everything. Um, Worship cried the clown, I am a TV making bondsman, go clockwork. And then the Mellotron after the verse with Fripp's guitar. Okay. And then in the fourth verse, has the whole band. So uh, the whole band, including the piano and the um, the woodwinds and everything. And um, Gordon, he's, by the way, the whole band is on top of Gordon. You, so you can barely hear him. Elephants forgot, force-fed on a stale chalk, ate the floors of their cages. And that's the first song, Circus. It's kind of crazy. And it's uh it's just those four verses, verse, 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 and the da na 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 thing. And then the the end is the instrumental entry of the chameleons, and it and then it just kind of trails off into typical King Crimson, you know, the outro. <laughs> the second track is Indoor Games, five minutes and thirty-eight seconds. This is my favorite song on side one. And also, Indoor Games is just one of my favorite King Crimson tracks in general, period. It's just one of my tops. Um, I love the big saxophone at the beginning, the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. It's Mel Collins. And the, the, this song is in the key of D major. The first verse is, 
Indoor fireworks amuse your kitchen staff. During plastic garlic plants, they snicker in the draft. And then the refrain is, in playing indoor games. Da, da, da. And then it goes back to the saxophone. The, da, 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 da. the second verse, Gordon singing, one string puppet shows amuse your sycophantic friends who's cheer, who cheer your rancid recipes in fear they might offend. See with the rhyming and the alliteration and everything, he's just, uh, Pete is the master of it. He's as good as Waters or anybody else. Um, playing indoor games, and then verse three is, your mean teetotum sins arouse your, arouse your seventh wife who pats her 60 little skins and reassures your life. <laughs> playing indoor games. I think teetotum is, um, uh, it's a game, okay. Verse 4 also he references a game after each afternoon you train baboons to sing or swim in purple perspex water wings. I think pers perspex is a, uh, I looked it up. I think that's a type of game. And then after the refrain again, it goes into a, like an instrumental solo jam. But it's more like a, it's, just, it's less of a solo and more like a jam where everybody sort of takes turn playing a melody. But not the main melody, not the, da -da -da -da. it's, uh, they're just, exchanging melodies okay and then the fifth verse is no ball bagatelle incites your children to conspire they slide across your frying pan and fertilizer fire i think bagatelle is another game um <sighs> indoor games so the verse is always followed by the refrain so there's four verses and four refrains and then that that long jam i talked about and then there's one final verse and that's indoor games one of my favorite King Crimson songs. Track three is called Happy Family. It's four minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, this is a song about the Beatles. It sounds so weird, okay? Just the way it sounds. The organ is turned up very loud at the beginning. And I cannot understand what Gordon Haskell is singing. His voice is so doctored and buried in the mix. But, I, you know, I've read about the song and I've read the lyrics online on Genius or whatever, and here's what I make of it. John is, in the song, John Lennon is Jonah. George Harrison is Judas. <laughs> I laugh at the absurdity, not at not at the song or, the, or at you guys or at Pete Sinfield. I just think it's all kind of funny. I get a, take a lot of pleasure in the music, okay? Paul is Silas, Paul McCartney. And Ringo is Rufus. <laughs> and I know it's Ring Ringo is Rufus because he sings about the comically large nose, okay? <laughs> the uh, happy family is in the key of D major. The first verse. Happy family, one hand clap, four went by and none came back. Brother Judas, ash and sack, swallowed aphrodisiac. Rufus, Silas, Jonah too. <laughs> so he's singing... He's singing about um, how they're how they're taking acid. Swallowed aphrodisiac. It must be. Um, okay, maybe not. Uh, I could be wrong there. Verse two: Whip the world and beat the clock. Wound up with their sh share of stock. Uncle Rufus grew his nose, threw away his circus clothes. Cousin Silas grew a beard. He did. Paul grew a beard. Uh, drew another flask of weird. Nasty Jonah grew a wife. <laughs> jo Judas drew his pruning knife. So Jonah grew a wife. He must be talking about Yoko Ono. Okay, and Judas drew his pruning knife. Um, if, if Judas is George, then did Judas... I don't know. I don't know what that reference is. Okay. I don't think he got a haircut. His pruning knife, he, did he leave his wife? He, he had an affair with Eric Clapton's wife, right? Isn't that, I don't know. Uh, I, I'll try not to get too deep into the lyrics. Uh, the refrain is, happy family, one hand clap, four went on, but none came back. And then there's a solo. Uh, and then uh, there's one more refrain, happy family, one hand clap, four went by, and, and uh, none come back. But that's, that's the song. It's the first verse, the second verse, the refrain, the solo, and the refrain. 
Uh, actually, this says there's three. Oh, there's three verses, is what I wrote down. So I only wrote. I only read to you the first two verses because that's essentially telling the story of the Beatles. Um, <laughs> that's that's the important part of the song. I, you know, Gordon Haskell. He's his voice is doctored so much in the song. He sounds like he's drunk. I I know he's not drunk, and I'm not I'm not slandering him or anything. It's just it's so hard to make out his voice. It's not one of my favorite tunes, um, but it is interesting that they wrote a song about the Beatles. Track four is uh, "Lady of the Dancing Water" on Lizard. Two minutes and forty three seconds. It goes by fast. Uh, it's to me, it's the least interesting interesting song on the album. Yeah, in the key of E major, the verse, he's singing, grass in your hair stretched like a lion in the run, restlessly turned. And that's how the verse goes. The refrain, I called you lady of the dancing water. And that's it. That's kind of like, almost like there's a formula on this album. There's a verse for the refrain. After the first, the first verse and refrain, there's an instrumental. There's not, not a lot going on there, honestly. And then the refrain comes back, and then the the final verse, blown autumn leaves shed to the fire where you laid me, burn slow ash. Burn slow to ash. I mean, I'm, um, farewell, my lady, the dancing water. I don't know. Is this a... I think I read that it's another song about groupies or... Um, you know what? I don't want to make too much about what the lyrics mean. It's... He's a great lyricist, and it reads back rate, but um, Pete's trying to tell his own story. You know, it's interesting, but I try not to think about it too deeply. The song arrangement is a verse, refrain, the instrumental, the refrain, the verse, and the refrain, and that's Lady of a Dancing Water. Not the most interesting song ever, but uh, I know a lot of King Crimson fans love it, so I'll acknowledge that. The second half of the album in track five is Lizard. Okay, it's 22 minutes and 24 seconds. The best, in my opinion, the best and also the longest King Crimson epic song. Um, it's a haunting jazz masterpiece with John Anderson singing. John Anderson from Yes, not the country guy. He is singing lead at the beginning and, uh, and then Gordon singing lead out in other spots. Um, it's in the key of F major. Uh, probably safe to guess there are key changes happening, although I couldn't determine that. There probably are. Uh, part one. Uh, by the way, this song is divided into, I think, four parts. Yep. Four parts, and uh, part one is Prince Rupert Awakes, four minutes and 34 seconds. This is the most structured part of the song with verses and choruses and a bridge. And John Anderson carries this part of the song, but even then his voice is not up at front and center and prominent like on Yes albums. He's sort of like... I I can't even imagine what he looks like singing this song in the studio because I've seen him on stage a bunch of times and I've seen live... I don't... I kind of get the feeling like he was handcuffed singing Scared or something. I don't know. It's, he just doesn't sound... He It's obviously John Anderson, but he doesn't sound like Yes John Anderson. Take that for what you may. Um, the first verse is John singing, Farewell the, mas the temple master's bells, his kiosk and his black worm seed. And it's kind of like... <laughs> He's kind of singing at that cadence, and that's what it sounds like. Um, the chorus is... It goes... Wake your reason's hollow vote. Wear your blizzard Caesar season coat. Burn a bridge and burn a boat. Stake a lizard by the throat. It's got da 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 da. It's kind of got that thing, and I think he even does that chant after one of the verses. I mean, it's really beautiful. Uh, my youngest boy said to me um, that he just really loves the chorus of the song. Uh, <laughs> I'm training I'm training the kids to be King Crimson fans, people. The second verse is Go Polonius or Neil. The reap the reapers name their harvest down, all your tarnished devil spoons. Uh Polonius is a character from Shakespeare, I believe. I, I wouldn't know, but um the chorus 
Wake of Reasons Hollow Vote, Wear Your Blizzard Season Coat, Burn a Bridge and Burn a Boat, Stake a Lizard by the Throat. So this is the exact same, the second chorus and the first chorus. And then the bridge is that, na, 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 na. And it starts to get a little bit more jazzy in here, but not yet, not yet. We come back for a third verse. Gone soon, pipe outers, moss weed court. Round which upholstered lizards sold, visions to their laden flock. And then it ends, now tales, Prince Rupert's peacock brings of walls and trumpets thousandfold. Prophets chased for burning mass in reels of dreams unrolled. And that's the, that's the whole Prince Rupert awakes, four minutes and 34 seconds. It's a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, and then that final verse. And then we go into part two of the song. Um, which is Bolero, the Peacock's Tale, six minutes and 30 seconds. About, uh, this is the part that has the oboe lead, the the drumming, and you hear that big oboe going and lots of light piano, lots of very unstructured instrumental sections going on here. And then the melody on top of melody on top of more melody, that's the that's the bolero, the peacock's tail. It's more it's just like very proggy jazz. And it's all instrumental. There's no singing. And that oboe at the beginning is really up front and center. Okay. Until the until everything starts to get like melody, melody, melody. Layers of melody. Part three is the battle of glass tears, including um the dawn song and last skirmish. So the Battle of Glass Tears is 10 minutes and 55 seconds. Most of it is the uh, the second part. There's a third part to Prince Rupert, Rupert's Lament. Um, but let's just let's just get into these one at a time. The first part, Dawn Song, is about two minutes and 20 seconds. Gordon is back singing this um, with some flute and piano, and this is mostly uneventful, but its purposeful is it. Its purpose is to set up the last skirmish section, which is the biggest part, the second part. And I don't know the time signature here. At times it feels like 4-4, but it's like changing. The verse is Gordon singing, Night night enfolds her cloak of holes around the river meadow. And then the second verse is, uh, Burnt with dream and tout with fear, dawn's misty shawl upon them. And it's just, uh, like I said, it's mostly uneventful, uneventful. But we're heading towards the last skirmish, which is the second of three parts for part three. Okay, and then last skirmish is about six minutes and ten seconds. And if you're listening along to the CD, it's this is the 13 minute mark um, when the song picks up again. This is my th- this is probably my favorite part, the John Anderson part, and then we get to last skirmish. Okay, so the first time. Uh, you hear this da 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 um, and this is a repeat of the the dawn song kind of like that main oboe riff thing but the second time it comes around in the last skirmish it it does this uh, da oh, I hope I can get it right da 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 yeah that's how it goes Da 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 da. It's got to be the oboe, right? And then there's a lot of mellotron in the song, um, in the form of orchestra and strings. And it's this whole last skirmish part is a very big instrumental, and it's just very big and grandiose, almost like jazz. That's my favorite part of the song, the last skirmish. The third part of part three is Prince Rupert's lament, about two minutes and thirty seconds. Um, in the in the two long instrumentals, The Last Skirmish and Prince Rupert's Lament, there's a lot of chaotic frantic sections of melody and melody and uh, dissonant chords. And I like, when you get to this part of the song, uh, Prince Rupert's Lament, Andy McCullough's drumming, um, but it doesn't stand out quite as much as Michael Giles. He's trying, almost like he's trying to drum in the style of Michael Giles. But it's um, it, it's cool, it sounds cool. And also there was an extended guitar solo here. And um, it seems like Fripp is just making a lot of trippy sounds, like um, like a where, where, where type thing going on. 
And Prince Rupert's Lament is also an instrumental. Um, and so this part of the song, the, the Battle of Glass Tears, it's two minutes and 20 seconds of singing. And then the last eight and a half minutes plus is just crazy jazz prog rock instrumental. Okay. And then we go to the fourth part of the song is called Big Top. This is a, a it's quick. It's a minute and five seconds uh, about. And after the guitar solo, the song ends with piano, uh, which I believe is Keith Tippett, and um, organ and Mellotron, which I believe has got to be Robert Fripp playing that and drumming. And it's chaotic. Uh, it's chaotic in the style of uh, In the Wake of Poseidon or In the Court of the Crimson King. It's just even more chaotic than that, okay? Everybody seems to be in different time signatures and it's just all over the place. And it does bring back that circus type vibe to it. Um, and that's the album. Big Top is an instrumental. And it ends with that 22 minute long, epic long Lizard. All right, in summary, Lizard, um, progrockarchives.com gives it a 4.13. Allmusic.com gives it a 4.5. And, a half. and uh, classic, uh, classic rock reviewer described Lizard as a decidedly Miles Davis-influenced hodgepodge of classical and jazz influences brought to their logical near-chaotic end and defined its music mind-bending unclassifiable creative stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, that's, that's perfect. It is like Miles Davis. It's just crazy. It's why, it's why it's, um, it's, it's not my favorite King Crimson album. Uh, I'll, I'll still say Red is my favorite. This is my second or third favorite. It's between this and Poseidon. And I, I'll say, I, I'll say, I'll put myself all there. I like this one better. Um, right now that I'm in the moment, yeah. I mean, Poseidon is excellent too in the wake of Poseidon. But this, I think this one's my, this one's my next favorite after Red. I like it a lot. Uh, what's coming up next? I did, I did the Led Zeppelin three. Uh, we got through Lizard. I've got um, I've got some work to do. I think it's going to be the Beatles yesterday and today. It's going to be hard to do. I don't have the album. I'll have to listen to it. I know it's on YouTube. I saw it. I couldn't find it on Spotify. It's ridiculously expensive to find the the vinyl, and I don't listen to vinyl, so I'll just make it up. Uh, get ready for uh, the Beatles yesterday and today. I'm out.